So um, first originally actually started off probably when I was about 18. Um, I was at college, I was doing travel and tourism, and then from that, one of my friends one lunch told me I wanted his haircut, and then I've always had a shaving head, so I said to him, I was like, you know, come back to my house, and then from that, ended up going back to my house, ended up cutting his hair, and then from that, started cutting my other friend's hair, and then really just found like the passion and the love of barbering, and then from that, started working in different barber shops, and here I am now, pretty much. Obviously, the award that I won back in 2013 was for the British Hairdressing Award, so for Men's Hairdressers of the Year. And I'd say, you know, the main sort of difference between the two, I'd probably say, is with men's hairdressing, it's dressing out on hair. You know, there is an element of cutting hair, of course, but when we're talking the lines of barbering, this is when we're talking more very traditional barbering techniques. So it's working with the clippers, working with the scissor over comb. You know, it's not to say with hair, men's hairdressers they don't work with clippers, um, but I think incorporating the two together really, you know, it makes you, it gives you a strong foundation and strong, solid um, education platform behind cutting men's hair in general. You know, so if you're incorporating both barbering techniques with men's hairdressing, then I think that really makes the best men's hairdresser or barber, should I say? Well, to, to be honest, with you like with. My, my whole story with the whole British Hairdressing Awards was, it's quite funny actually, it's like even when I, when I met you first off, like, no one know me. Um, but it was, when I first started in London, I started in London about two and a half years ago, and when I first came to London, this is where I sort of like saw that there's so many different hairdressers out there, there's so many different barb shops out there, and there was a real big competition, and it's like anything, you know, if you really want to sort of like become the best of what you do within your trade, you've got to be surrounded by the best people, and I thought to myself, you know, coming from a small town like Maidstone, Kent, where I'm from, coming into London, I'm going to be surrounded by all these people, and then, you know, I heard of the British Hairdressing Awards, it was always something that I really sort of, you know, I thought about entering, but really the people that enter it, the people that win it, are really sort of like the industry traits. And back sort of when I first started two years ago, I started doing test shoots, started sort of networking with different people, models, photographers, and then started shooting. And then I just thought, you know what, like, you know, this is something I quite enjoy doing. You know, I'm strong at doing it, I'm strong at the barbering, I'm strong at doing the men's, why don't I try and like enter the competition? And then sort of rounded up a team of people, you know, networked with models and photographers, stylists, like I said, brought a team together and then ended up shooting a collection. And then, you know, I kind of more or less wanted to create something that I loved, you know, and with my collection, it's very much incorporated the whole traditional barbering aspect side of things, as well as incorporating my hairdressing as well. And sort of from that, I, you know, I wouldn't say it makes me any different than anyone else. It just kind of, if I'm honest, I was just doing what I do, you know, just doing what I love to do. And it's just from that really just sort of, I suppose it was sort of bringing a new dimension towards men's hairdressing. And I'm not going to say that I was the first person to do all the fades and do all the, you know, sort of skin fades, hair fades, you know, all the poms, because it's been going around for decades and years, you know. And I suppose in a way, I caught on a trend that still started to come back. You know, barbering is massive at the moment, men's hairdressing is massive at the moment. And I suppose in a way, sort of, I kind of caught it at the right moment. Um, tricky question, you know, I love all aspects of hairdressing and men's hairdressing, female hairdressing, I think, because, you know, I work with the Tony Guy's unisex salon, I'd say probably about 9% of my clientele is male and tolerated. Um, you know, anything that sets me a challenge, to be honest with you, you know, I suppose in a way, a client that says to me, I'm not really too sure what I want, and the last time I had my hair cut from someone else, I didn't really like it. And to me, to do something like that, and then for them to leave the chair and be like, do you know what, thank you so much. That's an amazing haircut, it's the best haircut I've ever had. That's something that money can't buy, you know. And I do it because I love, you know, cutting hair, and I love styling hair. And to get that and that sensation, and to feel that, it beats anything, you know. It's a thank you, and it's just, uh, I don't know, in a way, the satisfaction to know that you've sort of made a difference to someone. You know, not to preach or anything like that and not to sound too like deep about it, but it's I think that's why a lot of people, you know, love doing what we do. It's like it's that satisfaction and it's the sort of relationship that you build with your clientele. You know, a lot of my clients I feel, you know, they're not just I wouldn't say they're my clientele, I wouldn't say they're my clients, they're, they're my friends now, you know, because you build that rapport with them. And I think 
to have a skill, to have a trade, you know, I don't go into work thinking I'm going to work, you know, and to me it's just to have fun, you know, and I think, you know, you just think about it, we spend the majority of our life working, you've got to enjoy what you do, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, like, back probably about 10 years when I was cutting hair, like, I remember, like, purchasing US Clippers and... I was so fascinated by clippers, like, you know, the different clippers you could get, the trimmers, different scissors, and I'd go all out and buy different ones, and I remember going on the internet and just doing research on different clippers, and, you know, I remember, like, buying the American clippers, and I was like, oh, you know, the currency is completely different to, like, you know, English, and then I had to buy this massive box, you know, this massive dial, and I was like, geez, I'm going to have to lug this around with me everywhere. And then he was trying to get the right frequency, and sometimes the clip would be like mad, so it makes some like mad noise. And then, just by chance, I found this wonderful guy named Larry who had this small little converter that done it to the exact precise, you know, speeds. And um, yeah, like, I, I suppose in a way, not, not life changing, but just really stepped up my game because. I'm starting to work with clippers that I wanted to work with but couldn't because of the effort to like bring a box with me and to like you know get hold of the clippers themselves and now it's like you know shaping up fading you know it's I wouldn't say it's made my life easier it's just up my game even more in the sense to be like do you know what I'll be able to, I can do these particular hairstyles now I can do it this way now and yeah I mean in a, in a way make my life a little bit easier but you know, I think it's like anything, you know, I don't think it really matters the tools, you know, being used, it's the person using the tools. I'm sure like any like great barber will be able to agree with me, you know, you just give me a pair of clippers and trimmers and I'm pretty sure I'll be able to bang out a good echo, you know, and it's, but I think, you know, now having the use of working with American clippers, you know, really has stepped up the game even more. Just don't even think about it, do it. Like, and that's that's real talk, like, you know, if you think about how small the actual, like, box is, the frequency converter, you know, it's it's small, it's compact, it's light, it's something that you can travel with, the clippers themselves, you know, um, they're brilliant, and the speed as well, it just does them to the T, and it's like, I suppose in the way, the American clippers um, just perform in a way probably a lot more better than English clippers, and to have that ability to be able to use something like that with such compact size, I think definitely, you know, I'd highly recommend for any like person considering doing it, you know, definitely try it out. You just need one frequency converter and then you can buy all the same clippers, the same price as like UK clippers. So definitely, I would definitely suggest it. I suppose in a way, if we're having a look, like, you know, I, I think in my head, okay, I want to create this, you know, like what I'm seeing at the moment, there's, um, I wouldn't say there's a divide within the barbering between European and American style barbering, but in my opinion, you know, European style barbering is we work a lot with weight lines, you know, and we create weight lines because we want to have that harshness of a weight line, whether you're working from a parting or whether you're working with it with a friend coming down or whatever else. Um, but then in regards to what I'm seeing American style of barbering is very much flawless flame fades, you know, like around the curvature of the head it's very much rounded off to have that sort of fluidity of a fade. Um, and I think now being able to have the usage of English and American clippers, I reckon you'll be able to like combine the two together. So it's like now in my head, whatever I think to myself, I want to create a particular hairstyle, I know I'll be able to achieve that, whether I want to do something where it's going to be with strong weight lines and graduation, something that's a little bit more seamless. So I think probably the combination of having both, you know, I think you've still got to know in here what you want to create with this.